That's how I line up the audio in a video. Okay. <laughs> so, sitting here with my boy, Blake Thompson. First time. <laughs> Make sure you say that fist length from that. Okay. Uh, uh, but you were just telling me about that drone. Go ahead. So, you're getting good with it? No, I'm getting real good with it, man. Uh, just playing around, messing with that thing, and uh, just seeing what it could do. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, I started being real soft with it because it has, like, three different modes. Normal, tripod, which are slower modes. But you get great angles. Sport mode, it it takes off the, it'll run into the wall. Like oh, go it, real it, fast. Yeah, in other two modes, <laughs> it won't ever bust in and that. But that sport mode is where you really learn to take the drone experience to another level. Yeah. Unfortunately, you will need to have multiple replacement blades <laughs> <laughs> because that you're gonna will wreck be into an some issue. Shit. <laughs> yes, I definitely ran into some stuff. Uh, but in all honesty. It's it's an experience in all its own, man. The drone just yeah. just 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 whipping that thing and, and being able to control. Uh, I don't know if you, yeah, you, nah, you're a sports guy. You play sports games. You don't mess with the Call of Duty and all that. No, nah, I, I used to back in the day. Okay, yeah, well, I used, used to, to be the Predator drone. You used to fly just yeah. watching the screen. That's how it is. If you think you're gonna look at the drone and fly it, you're gonna have to trust that screen. Oh and yeah, fly it like you're like you're you're flying the airplane. So it's it's dope, man. I yeah, love it. no, that's cool as hell. I, I've seen those things used for multiple things. I uh I was just telling you uh we might have use for that uh for the one you feed labs once we get some of those things going because we'd like to get involved with some real estate companies and being able to show like the whole property with that with that drone. That's I mean seems like a legit idea a hundred percent uh honestly one of the reasons i got it i i came into so wanting to do some business in real estate trying to uh you know shake my hand and it's a great way to check out the roof before you buy a yeah. property especially like uh if you don't you want know, to climb your big ass up there <laughs> damn right man what i look like man i ain't trying to turn into santa claus so uh, i don't want the suit keep the suit Keep the suit. Keep the suit. <laughs> but nah, you were able to check flashers around the chimney with it, as well as like you said, uh, and give a real good scope of a house, um, yeah. even befores and afters. So uh, I, I think it's a, I think it's great, man. It's yeah. a, I think a forty eight megapixel uh, lens on that thing. So I mean, definitely four K quality. Yeah, and I know you were uh, plus. I mean, for whatever you're trying to do, because you were telling me you're trying to maybe start to be a little digital creator, maybe something with your daughter, stuff like that. Something like that. That's what the that's what the dream is, Hammer. The dream is to uh, teach kids or or starting off with my kids how to to influence as yeah. far as a a message or create a brand. So using that to to really mainstream her her day to day, Hammer and. I got six kids, man. Yeah, you got a few. And you got a pack. Her going. being four, I've never seen no bit of life or energy come out. Like you know, I'm a I'm a big personality. Let's say. Oh that. yeah. And she matches that energy at four years old. So I'm just anxious to teach her that and really use the the drone and and, and recording as a, as a preface. Yeah. To to give her an idea of what she wants to do in life as well as a uh, you know. What kid well, doesn't love TikTok? Yeah, yeah. Well, and to like harness that, uh, harness that that big personality. Like, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know. For me, like, me and you were both talkers, right? We always have been. It's one of the reasons we've always got along. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, all the stuff that I would say when I was a kid, like, hey, I think I want to do this to my parents and stuff like that. They would more say, like, well, that's dumb. You need to find a job, and you need to go out here and just grind in that job. Uh, so do you feel like that's part of what you're trying to do with your daughter is like, no, like, Hey, if you can figure this out, use that personality, get out there and, and see what you can make of it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, uh, to release that creativity. I mean, and, 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 and see not just, not just with her, but like, uh, we use it as an avenue to, 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 to maybe game or stream like to show kids yeah that there's a way that you can have access to this stuff and and, and move with the world mm -hmm. uh, you like you said my mom used to laugh at me I was kind of like a genius when it came to Nintendo games yeah um, we were a little bit on the uh you figured out those patterns <laughs> there you go we was a little more on the on the poverty stricken side so we get them from the pawn shop on the corner uh yeah. downtown and uh 
and my mom would order the books before they came up with have them beat. And yeah. she would be like, boy, you you can't even, you playing these games and you got them beat in a week, but you don't want to do no schoolwork. And now we live in an era where playing on a computer or or doing what you love, if you have a passion for it, can can make you a pioneer in, in, in yeah. words. So Yeah, can make can make you a living. Yeah. You know a definite living. Playing games. Could you imagine if they would have told us when we were kids we could have made a living just playing video games? Yeah. We wouldn't or, have done nothing else. Or or posting dance moves on thirty second <laughs> dance move clips. And, and you could be world renowned. I mean it's a, it's a crazy thing what media does and and obviously there's the there's the drawbacks to social media if, if you don't have thick skin but if if you're confident in what you want which you know raising my kids uh to be confident in who they are as well as know what they want yeah uh i think that it's a great tour avenue yeah. to experience even if they don't want to go through it if she wakes up and says I don't want to do this. It is what it is. But let me tell you what she woke up and said, "Dad, when are we gonna get some merch so that I can I can I can uh, do some things on my channel?" And that and that's the passion I'm looking for. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I'm glad you said it does have some negative effects. First of all, I do want to say if she did wake up because I know you probably spent a little bit of money already just getting set up. You, if she did wake up and say, "Oh, you know what? I don't want to do this," you'd probably be like, "Oh, my pockets." <laughs> um, I would. I would. In that aspect, as far as the, I would be more, not to say hurt, but I would be more disunderstanding as far as like the opportunity. Yeah. But guess what? Hey. Then daddy goes to work and, and, and figures out another plan because like I said, uh, I have a daughter, a 12 year old that has the most beautiful voice, Riley. So um, we have all different plans as far as I don't yeah. want to say like the Partridge family, um, <laughs> you, but we have all different plans with bringing out the, the passion uh, through through everything that, that we do mm -hmm. as far as uh, my daughter Riley can sing her behind off. And uh, that's one of the avenues I look to explore with that as well. Uh, yeah. So well, and honestly, worst comes to worst, that you start using it for yourself. Because I mean, I think you could have a decent amount of reach as well. Like you yeah. said, you got that energy. You, you're a talker. One hundred percent. I mean, that's that's really. I mean, that's the only reason I even started this. Because everybody always told me, "Oh, your gift is that you can talk." And they used Annie. To, yeah. <laughs> they used to tell me. Uh, my mom always used to say, "You can sell ice to an Eskimo." And I said, that's fantastic. Do you know any Eskimos that need ice? Because yeah. I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> and you're right. And it's, it's a gift and a curse being a talker. Uh, because you, know, you have to find a niche to use that in. Yeah. It's not like you can just make money talking until now. Hopefully, one day this podcast take off. But Oh, oh 100%. 100%. And hopefully, that's what the end game is. Yeah. If I've, not, Hammer, you know what? I'd be happy with learning myself mm -hmm. how to edit and make content and videos just to create family memories. And oh, yeah. that's something that it, it would be priceless on its own in, in itself. So uh, yeah. I think that drawing up the passion through video and I don't even know where it came from. Yeah. I'm like, going to rearrange this mic for you a little bit. Cause I see you you're struggling. To look at me. You're trying to look at me and not. There you go. Right okay. in there. Um, it's it's a crazy thing, yeah. And, and if that don't don't draw some, I win either way because like watching these things twenty thirty years down the road, and the kids being able to see like the avenues that we created, um, as far as memories, yeah, that's something you can't never lose. That yeah, I did want to go back to that social media because you said like some of the negative effects. I, I think. I've always had this inner struggle with social media because I need it to promote the podcast and stuff like that. But I also think, uh, like, I forget what you said, but you were saying something about getting her personality mm -hmm. out there and stuff like that, social. But I think in some ways, even when people are very social on social media, they might not actually be that good in person because they're used to just the camera and the the online world and showing that and not actually being out there in the world and getting that life experience you know no you're right how often do you see like you see people at say a restaurant and it's a family and every single person in the family is on their phone the whole time like you're not even having an experience right there or you go to like a concert and people are just recording the whole concert like you're not enjoying it you're just recording it 
Mm-hmm. Like you might as well be getting paid for that. <laughs> you're, you're darn right. <laughs> if you're going to record, figure out a way to make some money from it. And that's where we talk about, like you said, the negative sides is perception. Um, honestly, it's the world we live in. It's sadly, I, I hate to be that connected to my phone, but uh, we live in a world where that's what it is. A lot of people are. So the negative side effects, I mean, like, you know, like your podcast, uh, for instance, uh, it's been around. We all watch it and you're going to get that feedback. Yeah. And you have to just be ready for it. And that's what I want to teach the kids is just be ready for that. Because whether you agree with it or not, the feedback that you get alter you grow you but it's gonna it's gonna sting i would say that's definitely something to teach them because there's gonna be negative feedback luckily with mine i've gotten a lot of positive but I, you know i haven't reached massive heights but i get a lot of positive luckily because a lot of the feedback i get because i'm not famous i mm-hmm. haven't blown up that big a lot of the feedback i get is just from local people that watch it and i'll tell you what is surprising though like i'll get I'll get random messages from people I've never really talked to in my life. I'm just happen to be Facebook friends with them or something. They'll send me a message and be like, Hey man, keep doing it. It's cool. And that's awesome. It, it a hundred percent is. And that's the hidden art of maybe teaching brand. Yeah. Uh, people don't know brand like, but you know, we don't speak often. No. You know, we might go six months, even sometimes four or five years without speaking. But you know, I never have to question your brand. Like, your brand draws me to that. And that's something that yeah. hopefully the kids know is, like, when you work on your brand as a person, as a perception, yeah, then people treat you how you want to be treated. You get the feedback. It's not negative in your case because, I mean, I ain't going to lie. I've not heard one person say one thing bad about you. And I'm sure that there is. <laughs> I'm sure there's know? something against yeah. <laughs> Well, hell, I know it's some exists about me, but at the same time, uh, you know, you fix those things. They're, they're not blind, but yeah. in teaching the kids how to deal with that social media, letting it roll down your back, yeah. or or just keeping them involved in the vision of staying true to their self and what they want to do. Like, my daughter wakes right. up and wants to sip tea with her stuffed animals, and she'll cry, Mew Mew, I want Mew Mew, and it's like, yeah. you're like... Mew Mew means this much to you. But then when you tap into that and say, hey, get Mew Mew, because Mew Mew wants to drink too, you really see how, how much this life is is not as, as random and, and that you can be a part in teaching your kid how to handle mm-hmm. pressures or you just be there with them. Yeah. That's pretty dope to, to share an experience through media or in any case so yeah i will say what one thing i've always liked about you man is uh like we we kind of became closer after high school like mm-hmm. we knew each other a little bit i remember i threw school. you that i threw you that one dime on the basketball court yeah. <laughs> that was back when you had you had hair like me yeah. believe it or not i had a believe pro. it or not <laughs> this man had hair out the what <laughs> Man, curly ass hair. You did, man. <laughs> that thick blonde hair. Yeah, ton- he, just like I do. Just the same thing I got. He used to have. Hey, straight out your mic a little bit. But hey, I, you remember Tanya Jones? She used uh-huh. to she used to sit behind me in uh, English class, and she would play with my hair, and she'd be like, "David got black people hair." You know, it was man. It was like some old school JT type stuff, <laughs> man. And then and I see him. What? <laughs> Man, after I got out of the military, because I disappeared later after, for a while, yeah. Boom, gone. I said, gone. damn, brother, like, shit. Yeah, well, you know what's funny is I used to shave my head every once in a while, and then one time I uh, I was like, all right, time to grow it back. And as it was growing back, I was like, oh, no, it's gone. Oh, It ain't coming back. <laughs> That's what I get for playing around. Huh? <laughs> yeah. That's what I get for playing with that razor. <laughs> oh, man, it was a damn shave, man. I, I was Now, like, I, I don't really hate it because it's less to work with. You know what I'm saying? But at the time, I was like, man, so I'm never going to have hair again. What the fuck just now, happened? You know how this started? I Because I ain't never seen you with your hair this long. Yeah, I, I blame my kids, man. Like, I, I got clippers. I don't go to the barber. I cut my hair. I'm very low-maintenance type of guy, you know. Yeah. Uh, and the guard's gone. So, of course, you know, natural me, I blame everybody in the house. Like, they sabotage me. <laughs> they threw the guard away. <laughs> Woe is me. Whatever, whatever, right? So then I was just like, well, I'm not cutting it. And yeah. then, you know, with the job I have, I was, like, always, like, worried about how people perceive me. And then it was, like, I was, like, man, I put a little, I put a little product in it, I guess, and I got the little the little curls, I guess. I don't know. Is it, yeah. is it a look or what? <laughs> but 
Hey, I, I just want to rock with it. Hey, I think it works for you, man. Uh, I do. I'm, I'm trying it out. I'm trying it out. I'm going to see how long it lasts. But, you, of course, you see we come along with the hair, come along with the grays. And, yeah. obviously, that's the, that's the stresses of life. But I, I who doesn't little, have I get a little bit of gray in the beard. But that's that's the only place I got to worry about anymore. Mm, mm, mm. But I'll tell you, one of the things I always liked once, uh, once we got out of high school and we were bullshit, you know, from time to time. And, then you know, we used to play ping pong together and stuff like Ooh. that for a while. Man, you, you mm. wasn't kidding about your mm. ping pong skills, though. A lot of people don't know that Hammer. They don't. They don't. <laughs> they, they say I'm making this up, but uh, you know I was one of the best. Man. You are not making it up. But what I always liked was your energy because it's like you just knew that I was that I was a good person. So like anytime we see each other, we hug. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? We don't. We don't even bullshit like when a I came fist in the door bump. just now. He tried to fist bump me. I said, "God damn, baby, look, get on in here, man." I ain't knew. I ain't too worried about COVID. Get on in here, man. You right. You right. Yeah, but uh, I I always like that about you, man. That's a that's a good positive energy. When somebody uh, when somebody has no no qualms with hugging you, that means they that means they feel a certain type of way about you. Yeah. Like you're a good person. You know yeah. that that always get you always give me a good vibe. Back to that ping pong though. People don't believe that you're good at ping pong. Nah, you know, it was in a, is it a different uh, era? Like, I, I wasn't really good growing up. Uh, yeah. Everybody associates being good with ping pong at the, the Martin Luther King Center, the, oh, okay. or I should call it the high chef. Yeah. When I was growing up, um, they associated with their, I learned my ping pong skills. Later in life. Later in life, and <laughs> it was just something that I grew a passion for and, and worked at. And, I mean, you know, I was so- trained by... A Nigerian, <laughs> and you know, so it was talking, good. Yeah, well, so we started playing ping pong because uh, I just started talking about how I got a ping pong table. I was playing mm. all the time. I was killing everybody. Then we and, went to that basement, and Blake Blake was like, "Oh man, I'm trying to come play." So he came over, and here I am thinking I scored a point because the ball I can't even see it no more. It's off the table. I can't I see it. That. All of a sudden, it comes flying back over the table from the depths of wherever. With this crazy curve on, I'm like, oh shit, I'm in for a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, that's crazy. You remember that? Went down and popped that thing up. It, it's good times, man. Damn, man, that's some good times uh, over there, man. Man, I would love when you would come over and play ping pong because you were the only like. No offense to any of my friends, but I have a game where I'm I move all over the place. Uh, Blake has a game where he's gonna put the spin on it that makes you move all over the place. Huh? So uh, we would actually we go back and forth yeah. for three or four games, and then yeah. just then just be like, all right, have a good one. Remember that one time? It's like me and you just playing. Everybody's just watching us. I'm like, oh my god, this is. Oh, I guess we, it did, wasn't we didn't awkward, have crowds. But, but we there sweating and everything, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking my shirt off. <laughs> bust your butt playing that ping pong. You will definitely sweat, man. Yeah. But yeah, definitely a great dude. Like I said, man, those is one of the hit memories. I remember when what, it was me, you, and. We all played over at the high shaft or the mill something that we won that league that year. Oh yeah, Basketball yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. yeah that, oh man, I forgot you played on those yeah, teams, man. man. It was so funny because we uh, so I got I, I was I was good at basketball. But I was not good at like organized basketball. I was good at street ball. So you and Corey Curtis was working just fine, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, because you know. know you and MJ himself, like <laughs> I don't know how Corey would make those jump shots because he shot from his hip. <laughs> but we, uh, uh, but so back in the day, I tried out for the uh, Big Red basketball team, got cut. But the coach told me like I like watching you play, but you can't run set plays, so. And then, uh, so it was like me, you, uh, Blair would play sometimes. We had uh, Jeter, Ray Moore. Yeah. Uh, man, I'm trying to think of who else was on those teams. Oh, Chuck, R.I.P. Yeah, Chuck. yeah, yeah. Uh, but, man, we we won those leagues two years in a row. That's crazy. You right, man. Chuck was on that team yeah. with us when we won it, man. I'll tell you what. If Chuck was like 6'2 to 6'5, he would have been one of the best power forwards. Yeah, he was scrappy, man. Man, he was he just throwing str- bows, strong, man. Mm-hmm. Just strong down there. But we used to – I we did, man. We <laughs> So, basically, what happened was – all the people that didn't feel like trying out for the team after I got cut, we just all banded together, <laughs> went down, <laughs> went down there and dominated. And Millsop. dominated, and we're in. <laughs> shout out Millsop Center. Shout out Millsop. We got us one. And what what year was that? That was what ninety. Oh 2000 man, I, maybe, my 99? my team won that two years in a row. I can't remember, but I, I remember I f- feeling bad at some points because it was like. It was like all of us, and then I, I was also good friends with like Josh Carmine and Matt Chapman, mm-hmm. but they would hardly ever get in because I mean, 
we were balling. <laughs> no offense, man. I, hey, Matt, I remember. Uh, yeah, Matt had a shot. Spent at your house. Well, and I'll tell you what, Chapman, he was one of the few people that guarded me really well because I, I was I was good with ball handling. All four, two of them, huh? Yeah, but <laughs> but he he just he had hands, so like my ball my ball handling wouldn't be as good. And like my pull up jumper was one of the things that I loved. But he had figured out how I brought it up. So whenever I would go to bring it up, he would just swipe, swipe it. I'm like, God damn it, this guy. <laughs> this guy's figured me out. <laughs> oh, he drove me nuts. I'll tell you, I, uh, one of the last times I went and played with BG, BG hadn't played with me in forever, and I hadn't played in forever. So BG thinks, because, you know, BG's real good. Uh -huh. We thought, he thought, oh, me and Hammer are going to go out here. We're going to run this court. We were over at the Y, and I was not in the same shape. I hadn't played in forever. I didn't have the same ball handling skills. And he started yelling at me on the court. He was like, Hammer, what is going on? <laughs> like, hey, bro, chill out, man. I ain't doing this for living, man. I didn't even make the high school team. What you think I care about it now for? <laughs> no, that's – he ready. He trained to go on that court, man. That's one thing he, he do, man. It does, and I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter what shape he's in either. Yeah. It doesn't. He's, he, he's going to hit the three. He's going to get down. What he was doing, he was driving them nuts. So he was he was playing down low for, like, rebounds. But he would just let whatever big guy from the other team get the rebound and then just rip it out of his hands when he came back down every time, driving him crazy. Mm, mm, mm. Man, God. I, I, man, I forgot about Millsop. I'm glad you brought that up, man. We no, had some fun over there. It was some fun times, man. Uh, that was just back in the days, man. It's kind of crazy to watch how the community changes. And, and like, even we're talking, like, about playing in basketball leagues when we came up and yeah. – uh, to take it back to social media or technology, it's like crazy these kids don't want to move. I mean, obviously, they'll play the, the, the regular sports at a high school level, but yeah, we was outside every day. Outside every day. And honestly, do leagues like that even cons uh, exist anymore where if you don't make the high school team, is there a league for, t for high school kids to go play in anymore? No. Nah. That's no. wild to me. I, I mean, I would say there is, but nine times out of ten, it, I, I don't, you know, it revolves around, you know, AAU, a lot of travel mm -hmm. money. And sadly, uh, that's another avenue into, you know, working a oh, lot. Oh, baby, alarm. hit me what with time? that alarm, baby. Hey, it's crazy, man. I don't even really smoke like that anymore, but that's a 420 alarm. Ooh. What was I doing that day that I set that alarm? I'm going to tell you, happy Easter in case we forgot. <laughs> Um, um, but Hammer, it's like you got all this like working the, the jobs that you work is so demanding, and, oh. unless you have your own, um, you know it's hard. Like I, I have, you know, six kids. Like I said, uh, shouts out to Hillary. She makes it happen. She takes them everywhere. Does yeah. anything in the world like to where um, I can not to say be lazy, but I can focus on my job. But at the end of the day, you come home and you missing that, and yeah. that's another deciding factor why I decided to, to 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 make memories with my family. Ultimately, to try to influence them into a path of whether they want to sing, social media, act, or whatever the case may be. Because we're living in a world where we have this at our fingertips, and I can actually come home now and do and be able them. to do something with them. And even if it doesn't shake or or bake, to spend that time and to be able to relapse this to make our own memories it's just what it's about and you don't you like you said you don't have that where you remember what bellevue used to be like when we was kids yeah yeah and even before that you just don't have that so i just want to connect with them in that way to where you're not only teaching them something that could benefit them in life but shit we have a good time i mean I'm getting good with the drone hammer. Yeah. But if I show you the wings, then it's, it's, they banged up now because we had a little fun and you learning. You might bounce off a wall or two, yeah. um, but it's all part of it. And they're right there with me learning it and having fun too. Yeah. Well that uh, I would say that's a good thing too, because not only are you having fun with them, doing those things with them, but that also is teaching them skills. You yeah. know what I mean? And teaching them drive, which I think drive is something that really lacks in, uh, in the, the younger group today. I really do. They, I mean, other than mm -hmm. what you see with the, the, the Steubenville Broncos, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. them kids is very passionate. They made a great program well, revolved around, around passion. Come on. Um, other than that, like you said, uh, you know, we, we've seen the air where uh, you do have the Martin Luther King Center as well as other – Does that get used groups. as much anymore? 
Um, it, it's not getting much use as it used to, but the little dribblers are down there, and there's all sorts of programs yeah. to where. Um, but again, like you said, we need more passion around them, more people involved to to create a message, and 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 that's why. Uh, you know, we're looking at where we're looking at if you don't take the control yeah. to learn to teach your kids these motor skills that that may make them good. You know, we do have a lot of sports. Do you think you think the because uh, I feel like work in some ways didn't used to be as demanding as it is now. Like now you're expected to work like 50, 60 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, that seems to be changing some with COVID. We'll see if that trend continues. But before that. 50 60 hours a week so when you're working 50 60 hours a week it's hard to then contribute time to places like the martin luther king center mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. it, it becomes a lot more difficult to get involved in those things yeah you think that's a big part of that that issue 100 percent. like yeah. uh now that like i said uh with me working as constant as i do and sometimes even when you're at home you're working uh hillary can run around all she wants and and do whatever she wants with them kids uh yeah she takes them every single place every single where but one person can only be in one spot is she a stay-at-home mom now no she actually works okay um so picture that like yeah. you know to delegate the time to to have to find to take six kids here there and everywhere and, and and does a great job of it but like i said one person is one person and that's why it's so hard with when you have a, a two-parent even if you have a two parent household, when you're working all the time yeah. to provide for your family and you got one and we got six kids, uh Yeah, man. You know, somebody's so. not to say missing anything, but you're dependent on a lot or you're spreading yourself thin to where you can't give it all to everything. And and I think that's you know, not to say it's an excuse because we find a way, but it puts a lot of pressure on it and then the kids to to feel that pressure too is like Yeah, man, what are we gonna do? Yeah. I, now you don't know this. Uh, well, you might. I don't know how much you watch, but at least once in uh, once a podcast, I got to take a piss break. Okay, so that's, that's what's about to happen. <laughs> you know, do your thing, brother. Do your thing, man. All right, go ahead. You were saying there's uh, with your kids social media wave. Um, it, it's a big social media wave, and, and I don't care if they if they jump on it or off of it because social media is really not the 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 focus of what i want to teach my kids it's more of how to control your brand yeah and your perception by how you interact with people and how people perceive you and once i once the kids learn to win at that and it be, creates a respect for themselves that 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 teaches them a, a there's a business side to just picking up your phone and and if that's the walk away that i get is that my kids understand that that there's a business side to being in your phone, that the reason that they're captivated in their phones is because somebody made a business plan yeah. that made us captivated to our phones. I just want them to be able to control that by understanding that they have the avenues to to at least look into that or see yeah. that. Actually, I like that a lot. Uh, and just, honestly, just even teaching them to navigate social media in general. Honestly, that's not, that's, that's not a bad lesson for them to learn at any point. A hundred percent. And then they'll they'll learn the responsibility that comes along with that. Yeah. With learning more behind the scenes as far as what it takes to go into that or navigating or, you know, handling yourself in in this social media world because let's just be honest, that's that's the world is coming to. When you got DocuSign and Zoom and all these and even with the uh with the pandemic. Well that's what I'm you saying. You know, we're 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 coming to a world where it can honestly be no touch, no limit, and you still sign in for houses, sign in bank documents, sign in legal documents, all while not touching or talking to anybody face to face. I mean, and that's, it, it, you know, we, we veer from it, but that's the world that we're coming to because of the trends that are set. Yeah, not even the trends that are set. Like, if we have, say, another pandemic like this happens, man, it's just going to push even more to the forefront. And now you have amazon and things like that like everything pushes you to not leave your house sit on the couch and do everything mm -hmm. that you want to do um i don't necessarily like it but no matter whether i like it or not that's where we're heading that's exactly where we're heading yeah and, and it's kind of crazy 
because in the world where our parents said, well, why don't you just want to sit down in the house and like we yeah. were dying to get out the house and go play baseball, kickball, dog. Like I didn't care what it was. Two yeah. blocks away, it's I had outside. to be gone. Like <laughs> and like you see, the tides are turning. Where we're in this world where it's like stay in your house and spend your money and and order offline and order yeah. DoorDash. I mean. And you order DoorDash and it'll cost you twenty more dollars than what you were planning on spending. You still do that shit. But why do we do it? We do it because the marketing and the advertisement and the social media tells us it's the cool thing to do. And because it helps us be more lazy. Mm -hmm. That's what I tell people all the time with uh, less effort. Yeah, when people were talking, I don't know how much you listen to people's wild conspiracy theories, but people talking about the vaccine with I uh, have my own. <laughs> <laughs> But the people talking about, like, with the vaccine, like, oh, they're just trying to chip you. They're just trying to chip you. Listen, they, they don't have to secretly chip you. You know what I mean? Like, literally, if they if they say, hey, we'll put this chip in your arm, and you won't even have to use a phone anymore. You can just say, call Blake, and then I'll just have something in my ear that calls Blake because I have this chip in my arm. Or you just tell me, you know, you did you uh, grow up watching Star Wars? Uh, I watched them all, but... But, you know, Jedi, so they can yeah, move oh. stuff like that. So you know you walk when you were when I was a kid I would walk by the grocery store door and you know how it opens itself. Oh, you the force is strong. In yeah, this yeah. So if you just tell me that you insert a chip and I can now open doors by doing that, you're gonna stand in line for it. People will stand in line for it and pay for it. You won't have to secretly chip them. One of the sad things about the way I feel, and this is where you know one could say I'm a conspiracy theorist. The sad thing is, is that. You know, if if we if we told people, hey, sign up, there's a chip that you got to get that'll track your every move. They would say we're 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 crazy, we're effing crazy, and I'm not never going to get that in my body. I'm not never going to get that. But when you pick up that phone and you was digitally attached to that phone, mm -hmm. it, you you chip, you already chipped and you don't know you chipped. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If you just put a, if the, if you tell if you say AT and T next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll use a different one. Verizon. <laughs> Say Verizon next week was like, hey, we got this chip now. We just put that in you, and now you can just order your food by talking. You can just do this. You can just do that. It'll give you all these great benefits. Now, not only do they not have to secretly chip you, but now you're going to pay them $2,000 to chip you. Yeah. That's how it's going to work. Yeah. You make my life easier by putting this chip in me that's going to fully track me. Done. And it's the age old question. You attach a little value to price and guess what? People feel like they have to have it. And mm -hmm. so so I feel like that's where the social media wave could take he who wants to control it. Um stop living by it and control it and and take back what what the perception is. Yeah. Well it could make you more uh part of it, I guess, instead of just just like actually being somebody who helps move things instead of just being part of it unwillingly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or not knowing, I guess. Yeah. I guess you're right. It's to, to the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Maybe I just like to try to control the outcomes as much as I can. And uh, like I said, at the end of the day, I don't care for social media. Yeah. That's where it's the, the oxymoron. Yeah. It's because here you talk about putting your kids on social media. Anybody that knows me knows that my Facebook uh, thing probably ain't had a comment or a post in, say, in a dead. year or two. <laughs> he's dead. Um, I don't believe in it. It's just that the air that I was uh, read in is mm -hmm. like you don't scream your business over social media. You don't let nobody know your move. Yeah, you, you show me your family. But to me, I have all those pictures in my phone and, and yeah. everything's private to me. I'm a private person as loud and, and crazy as I am. I'll talk to anybody, but yeah. you're going to have to see me one-on-one -on -one yeah. to talk to me. But uh, being that it's the way of the world, I do. I want my kids to learn at least how to control it as opposed to, to be controlled it. by it. Yeah. Well, that's – and that makes sense to me. I, I'm with you. I, I was never one that was really big into social media. The podcast is what really made me dive into it more. Uh it's just like the way, way I feel even about social media is like say you run into somebody you haven't seen in a long time. Maybe they moved away. They're back visiting. Uh, if you're on Facebook all the time and they're you actually using it and they're posting all their pictures and giving you every update of their life on social media, then when you see them for the first time in years, you really don't got nothing to talk about because, yeah, man, I know. I saw it on your Facebook. 
you you posted yeah. it all. Yeah. I I know everything yeah. you got going on, <laughs> <laughs> even the stuff I don't agree with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I dig it, and and I guess that's the excitement that that I was raised on, where it was fun, where you didn't see your cousins or you didn't see your aunts and uncles for three four months, and then you drive to Columbus or Cleveland, wherever the case may be, yeah. California, and you see in that feeling mm-hmm. like social media does keep us connected and i and i love that but i like that real authentic uh emotional vibe from yeah from, the, from life like the personal like mm-hmm. you actually bump into each other get to get to fucking so i guess reconnect. that's it man i'm a personal person man yeah <laughs> i'm personal person <laughs> you definitely are <laughs> i i just like the vibe man i just like to uh you know have fun yeah make it exciting and hopefully um like I said, man, one day worlds collide and I don't have to work. Uh, that that would be a, a fortunate world. Yeah. Um, if we were able to cross those lines. Oh, yeah. I, You know, and, you know, you're start, starting to do your thing. I've been doing my thing. We've been talking about before the podcast, uh-huh. trying to intertwine them a little bit. We'll see yeah. how it plays out. Definitely. It looks like you might use some of uh, the One You Feed Lab services. So that, that, that'll that be a plus. Hopefully yes. we can mutually help each other. Yes. And 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 it's just just networking, like I said. Uh, y'all might not know this, but I came to ask this man for a lot of help in here. Not to say bumping heads, but you networking, you never know what you find. And uh, he giving me some hidden gems as far as uh, what I could do with with my daughter and, and family. And it's just a it's a crazy thing when you meet people thinking outside the box of. And this is what I mean by your business alone truly how to show people how to control social media yeah not to just live by social media or not to think that social media is random it's it's a platform that's there and it's up to the the controller to control that yeah and it's not random there are algorithms and stuff like that so it's not random at all to get on a, a a less serious topic i know you're a busy man but uh what 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 have you been uh you you watch tv at all you read what do you Whew, the most things I do is I don't watch too much TV. No, uh, veered away from that. Don't, don't really even know why. Yeah. I do know why. It's because the kids took over the TV. <laughs> I don't get to watch nothing. It's always why you think I'm so mad about uh, got social kids. media and this and this and that. Is like no, they, I have no more kids um, <laughs> because the kids just rule it. They put the YouTube on the TV, Netflix, whatever they want to watch in. So if I watch anything, it'll be like uh, Bakugan or A is for Adley. I'm I'm yeah. name dropping on you, Adley. Let me get a like or something. Um, it'd just be crazy. So, like, my daughter tells me, Dad, like, don't pick up the remote. This is my TV. And I'm like, sadly, I'm like, yeah, it yeah. is. It's yours, babe. And so with that, most of the time goes into uh, Hammer learning different avenues. Yeah. Um, I'm an avid believer in... YouTube and self education, yeah. meaning that if you put enough time and effort into it, uh, you can learn how to build a car. You can learn how to build a plane or reconstruct a bathroom or start a podcast. Start a podcast. Yeah. Flip a house. I'm from that era where if you put the work in, so that's what I spend my time doing is little different. BS ventures that I got in my head yeah. that I think that I could like either teach my kids or or family I or just, just put better all, yourself or better myself I yeah. just research 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 yeah. and that's that's what I really mean by the phone like so I don't be on social media but I'm on Google like 95% of the time so you're pretty much always just on your hustle just trying to figure yeah. something out I wouldn't even say hustle because even if it doesn't come with a monetary value just to learn yeah like, like when we talk about topics here and and i play it back in my head at night tonight i'm gonna look it up in the phone yeah I mean, we have you know everybody's walking around with at least a, all a, the information eight hundred a thousand dollar device in their hand and it's like you tell me something and i don't go like look it up i don't go like, see to I, check the temperature yeah and we live in a world where you can, you can have all the power in the world to look it up. But like we were talking earlier, when you said about the effort, it's like we won't put in the effort to type in like what you just told me. And yeah. make sure it's factual before we repeat it. We'll right. go repeat it 
and then wait for somebody else to do the work and say, nah, look, you it look ain't that. And it's like, oh, okay, I know such and such told me that. And 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 that's where I feel like the power of the phones, the the, the, the laptops that we have in our hands. Yeah. You know, that's what I spend my time on, just watching, learning, growing, yeah. reading. I, I don't read. I'm lazy. <laughs> I will do the audio books. <laughs> I'll learn my information from audio books. Yeah, I've, I've recently, I, I, I really like reading again, but I have a hard time, I have a hard time finding time now. And I, I really don't watch that much TV anymore either. Like, honestly, most of the time if I turn on the TV, it means I'm getting ready to take a nap or go to sleep uh, in general. Because I, I just, uh, recently it seems like a, just a phenomenal waste of time. Like, it's on in the background most mm -hmm. of the time. <sighs> You just blew. I mean, you, I feel the same exact way. Yeah. And and honestly, I'm not knocking a TV. I'm not knocking no. anything because I, I love it. And if something catches my attention, don't get me wrong. I'm there are some it. shows. Yeah. You know, there are some shows. But it, I don't want to say it's a waste of time, but it's a waste of time. Yeah. It, it's so much more better. Like, and I know this seems stupid, but I would rather play a video game. Um, cause in that, at least you can learn an algorithm and it's to how to play that. And it's interactive. And, and it's interactive with other people yeah. as opposed to watching TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, not to say for nothing, but you watch reality TV and it's fake. Uh, yeah. I'd rather spend the time trying to make my own reality TV show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd rather spend my time doing that than anything because at least I can, not to say control the narrative, yeah. but... Live the moment. You're gonna have Blake plus seven. <laughs> no, don't do me that hammer. It's six. It ain't never gonna be no more than six. Well, I'm saying if it's just Blake, you gotta add your wife in there too. So, yeah, you right. You right. She deserves everything. Cause I ain't gonna lie. Without hammer, you got what? You just got you and a brother and a sister, right? Yeah. I mean, I came from a house where was that, but like, you know. Living this, I mean, my daughter, my oldest, 17, lives in Columbus. Um, so it's five in the house. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie to you, Hammer. I, I don't know how she do it, and I don't question how she do it. Yeah. I don't even question her. I just let her do it. You are the boss? <laughs> you, you got do this. <laughs> what you do? Because I ain't never seen somebody that could be like, I get overwhelmed. Like, And now, you know, at my job, I'm handling corporate calls. 1200 stores speaking in front of vice presidents and doing this and that and she called me for a dentist appointment and i'm <laughs> panicking I'm anxiety panicking <laughs> and it's like she's like you didn't remember i told you last week and i'm like how the hell do you know all this stuff in your head <laughs> how like so i mean she you know to, to the craziness of she, everything she probably figured out how to use that calendar in the phone Sad part is, is if you knew her, you would know she's the most dis. She's more disorganized than me. But makes it all work. When it comes to them kids, she's when it comes to them kids, it's like a, a mother line. Like when it comes to them kids, she'll fall us. Me and her, she'll fall us short nine times out of ten for getting stuff. Oh, we were supposed to do that. We did. Oh, we were supposed to do that. We didn't. But when it comes to them kids, so I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I, to all the craziness. It's like to she takes that off of the plate like yeah. where i can i can be crazy i could be this conspiracy theorist because as long as just taking care of doing what i do with the kids like as far as like an appointment a, 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 a basketball uh shit, everybody will tell you like she's in every group chat i ain't in none of them she yeah. just tells me hey you need to do this at this time and do that and i and I do and it because she knows. Like, Without question. <laughs> she know what time it is. She, where's it at? Where's the field? What field? Because, you know, it, it gets. And 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 that's one thing that, uh, like I said, in this crazy world, uh, I don't want my kids working. I don't want my kids working 40 hours a week. No. Let alone 50, 60. Um, obviously, I understand they have to start out that way. I just don't want my kids thinking that that's life. No. I, I honestly, I, I truly believe that in order in order to be at the top of your game i really don't think people should be working more than like 30 hours a week yeah. i really don't otherwise i mean on on work stuff i think you should always be working on you whether it be whether it be the gym or learning something or whatever 
but I don't think that you, I don't think people should be at their job working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. I, I don't think you're at your optimum once you go past 30 and I don't think it's optimum for life in general. And I, I hope the world changes, but I, especially if you, if you, if you're thinking about a, a, a wife, uh, you know, imagine how much stress that adds to, mm-hmm. to, to life. Um, and I'm, obviously you, you don't work, you don't eat, you don't grind, you don't shine. I yeah. get that. Um, but where that picture becomes tainted is, is, is you work 40 hours, you usually start working 40 and then you get a little notoriety, right? Yeah. And then you work 50 because you get these promotions. And then you work 60, and guess what? Man? When you work at 60, there ain't no promotions after that. Yeah. You know, or I ain't going to say there ain't none. But they slow down, and, and it all depends on how much more extra you're willing to give than what you get your salary for. And that's not a, it's not a, it's not a kick. It's the way of the world. Yeah, it's just the but way it then works. to get that next level, you take away from your family. And you ain't there. And and you're already giving away sixty, and, and they ain't learning nothing. Yeah, and you're already giving away sixty. Like, how much more do you have to give? And and that's what I don't want them. We we spend life where they say go to college, pay these universities back, and and college debt instead of hey go network, go use social media for what it's there for to meet somebody like you that that learns something like you yeah. that knows how to do it like you want to do it. Instead yeah. of being random, we control those outcomes. And not to say, like you said, you got to work, but I want to show mine. Like this that I chose to put in, I mean, it's honorable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but go start your own. Yeah. And, and, and live for yourself or have the avenues too, because then you can live your life to, to really, you know, raise your family, live a quality of yeah. life where you're not, you're not stressed trying to make a billion dollars for when you be happy with 150 grand a year yeah you're stressed with making a billion dollars a a, year if you can't be happy with 150 grand a year i feel like something is wrong because you can do a lot with 150 grand a year man i've never made close to that money and i've done some things that i really enjoy doing I've, i've created this off of way less than that yeah uh but I think that's the biggest thing is people need to understand you work for life. You don't you you don't make work your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and we chasing that. Yep. Yeah. And I think and I do think that's a big problem, man. And I and I have no issue with people going and finding their job and that's the job they like. That's what they want to do. But if you have a creative side, people need to understand you need to start pursuing that. And now there are so many more avenues for you to pursue that and try to make that dream happen. Yeah. One hundred percent. You know, aside from you know social media, uh, like it all revolves around effort. Like yeah. we talked about in the beginning, is like um, if, if you if if you're good at cutting grass, you know you you go cut grass. Like, Our boy Dord. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Like I mean, you know, I mean my 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 fat behind ain't really trying to cut no grass, but no matter what you do, you could, you could make the type of money that allows you. And I'm not saying that, you know, 150 is like a a great monetary value, but when you, when you weigh the options of 60, 70 hours a week, making 90 grand a year versus doing something you like to do, it's making 150 and spending the rest of that time with your family and being there. Yeah. Then it's worth the weight in gold. Yeah. You know, then you're a millionaire at heart because not only are you there to teach them what you learn, you're sharing the tools. Because I mean, I let's be honest, I could teach my kids all they want about managing seven people, how to sell. My kids don't want to learn that. Well, and honestly, I think I think with what you're saying too, we need to point out like, so it doesn't matter what the monetary value is. So say it's fifty or sixty, as long as everybody's eating at the table, as long as everybody's got food on the table. And you're being able to live the life the way you want to live it, then you're rich. Uh huh. You know what I there, mean. The, you're rich. Yes. You know what I mean. It doesn't. It doesn't necessarily. You, being extremely wealthy doesn't necessarily mean that you're rich because yeah, let, let you may say, be living a shit life. Let's say my job pays me a million a year, but I'm only with my kids seven hours a week. Yeah. Am I rich? Nope. No. Nah. No. Nah. I'm not rich. No. Not at all. And that's a struggle in itself. We 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 fight to make this dollar amount per year, right? Yeah. And then we think, like, I made it. Yeah. Because, like, let's say, like, I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, let's start the journey 2013. Life wasn't good for me. 
whatever, whatever, you know, went through some trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. I was faced with the ultimatum, you know, get a job. Yeah. Hammer, I was making eight dollars an hour. Yeah. Eight dollars an hour. Um, fast forward that three And compared and to that, what you were used to, you were probably like, What the fuck am I doing? Whew. And then <laughs> and, and but where we talk effort, you mm. put the effort into that, right? Um, same effort that I put in a lot of stuff that I had seen benefits from, you put in that same effort. Um and it's not a it's not a slap on the back, but coming from me, uh I got a high school diploma. I ain't got no college, no same. nothing. Um long story short, you make it eight dollars an hour, you fast forward that three and a half years. And you making upwards to 85, 90 yeah. grand a year, all based off of effort. Yeah. All based off of effort in which you chose to get. Grind. Hustle. We can all do that no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, here's the kicker to that, though. You spend all your time chasing that salary and you forget what you lost. Like, you know, because a lot of that the family. family the values, the the push, your stress when you come in for work because you know we're moving up and doing that. There's a lot of stress to come involved with that, and that's why I wouldn't wish that upon my family. At least I won't stand by it to not teach them that they have avenues to, and to do it different. You know, you dance with the devil. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, I don't believe in social media, but I'm going to teach them there's an avenue that you can get rich off of social media. Yeah, yeah. The uh. You were talking about. I, I I do want to throw a shout out to uh, Mikey Lamb huh? because I, I'm I'm you guys you guys actually have like a really tight knit group circle and I'm friends with all of you in that but I am semi on the outside of that mm-hmm. like I'm not I'm not getting called to reunions and stuff which I have no which I have no qualms with because yeah. y'all grew up together I just happen to be friends with all of you kind of individually <clears throat> um, but Mikey Lamb helped put a lot of people on man. He he helped put a lot of people where they're at. Am I, I mean, am I wrong in that? Um, nah. Uh, definitely. Uh, mm. It's crazy how life will take you if you talk to if you talk to Mike Lamb. You know, it's it's crazy when you when you meet real people. If you talk to Mike Lamb, he'll tell you that I inspire him. Right. Right. But if you talk to me. I'll tell you that Mike Lamb inspires me. Yeah. It's a weird thing when you're looking at at uh at people you genuinely care about. Um, he'll tell you that the 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 things on the outside looking in and the life I was living. A- aside from that, you know, I like my guys. I'm gonna take yeah. care of my guys. Everybody know me, I'm gonna take care of my guys. Like mm-hmm. my guys got nothing to worry about. He's the same exact way. Yeah. Except for he was always pushing for us to 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 do it his way, <laughs> right? <laughs> Shouts out to you, Mikey. Cause you, uh, you, 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 you mf um, He wants you to do it his way. He's very you. You probably don't know that side of him, but he's very uh, pushy. But at the end of the day, same way, uh, you know, a good leader, yeah, will always see qualities in you that that you don't see in yourself. Yeah, um, and so whether it's student becoming teacher or teacher becoming student. Uh, you know, Mike Lamb has the balls to tell you how he feel. Yeah. And not think about how he feels afterwards, just knowing that he came from a good spot. Right. So, uh, yeah, he, he pushed a, a lot of us to say, like, it's like, I mean, this is the dream. Like, this is what I see. This is what you're doing. This is what it could be. And not only that, like, you have a chance to, you know, what, what guy think they're going to make, you know, upwards of 120 grand just from have BS and, most people look at what we do in the industry that we're in is like we're BSing in department stores or, or we're just sitting there. Like, you know, they don't understand the hustle that mm-hmm. comes along with hustling mm-hmm. the way we hustle. And, and and to push us to that level uh, as far as opening up doors. Yeah. I'd be real with you. I put his uh, his code on my, my application and I'm not going to say that's the reason I got hired because I was the real deal. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, to have avenues like that where people trust and respect you, no matter what 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 you've been through or what your past was, to put you in a position to be where they know you should be. Yeah, that's true selflessness. Like yeah. you know, and we share that between the, the guys that we we roll with. That's what I mean. Like he, he to me, he he saw potential in everybody that uh, we grew up with, and he he gave everybody the avenue to like so. 
we all we all had the ability once we got in the room like i'm not part of this but you guys so we'll say you guys because i'm not part of that of, of that at&t cloud but everyone he knew you guys had the skills once you got in the room and he just helped you guys open that door to get into the room i mean yeah yeah similar to anything else i mean i ain't gonna lie like he ain't had to recognize the skill like mike when you see this uh I used to tell him, because they was all in there before me, and I used to say, man, damn, man, if I was doing this, you know I'd be the GOAT, right? And he'd be like, ah, oh, nah, same with uh, my man, CJ. <laughs> um, <laughs> CJ probably hated my guts. Oh, yeah. When I got into, uh, when I was trying to get into there, because like I told you, I was making $8. You know, I was forced with wanting to change change up some things about my life, uh, you know, but I want the big money, you know, and I'm like, yo, CJ, how much you make? How much you make? How much you make? What you got to sell? What you got to do? And I'm thinking the same thing that everybody think, like it's just sales. It's like, oh, people come in, you just give them it. And he was like, CJ even, CJ was like, man, it's just what you make it. You know, it's what you make it. And to touch on the theme of effort, it's just what you make it. He used to tell me, you don't know what you're going to make because, and, and even CJ, CJ be like, man, you're going to make a lot of money, man. Yeah. He said, because you just, you just, uh. You got that personality. You just you just want it, like, you know, and so. You got that personality, you got that grind. First things, and then it was like, what? Like, I remember my first time, because, uh, you know, when you get into that, like, at this time, Mike Lamb is so far up, like, that you don't see Mike Lamb on a day-to-day. Like, yeah. you just don't. Like, uh, He's just out there killing it. But, um, you know, CJ and then I came, and. I ain't gonna lie, man. Not to toot no horns or nothing, but it was like a uh, shouts out to Matt Rash. He'll tell you it was like the second coming, man. Mm. Um, I put so much grind and effort into it that uh, it paid off, and that's why I like a company like that. Like why we we do slave and we do a lot behind the scenes. I mean, being real, where where they gonna give a, a guy like me with no college degree a chance to make the type of money that they pay me? Yeah. I mean, they paying me some real love cash to, to do what I love. Talk to people and motivate people to yeah to to do what I see in them, whether they see it or not. So the so then even though you uh, even though you got some qualms with it, you also got a lot of love for it. Yeah, yeah. I only have qualms with missing family missing my time. family. Yeah. Um, that's what's most important. Yeah. That's what's most important. Um, if I ain't got nothing. Um, Do you ever I think can, you'd I be can, in a position in your life where you thought like my family time is going to be the most important thing back in the day? Nah, because you 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 neglect that. <laughs> you neglect that, telling yourself I'm providing for my family. Meanwhile, <laughs> hammer. I tell my kids that all the time, man. Like man, back in the day, because you know I I, I have a, a 17 year old and a uh, and a stepson, Kison, that's a uh, 25, and it's like. Uh, Raising them and I'm and I would be like uh living a, a a lifestyle like be up at eight in the morning nine in the morning leaving the house doing what I wanted to do not coming home till three four in the morning yeah sleeping for four or five hours and you know you neglect responsibility so you take shortcuts with effort by yelling and screaming and disciplining and whatever have you and and then you learn like. You, you learn that why you still doing that being selfish, right? Uh, in whatever lifestyle you in, and then you work a nine to five, and, and you catch yourself being that same way, right? Yeah. You catch yourself mad or upset or or taking shortcuts, basically meaning, not responding correctly. Yes, not yeah. yeah. E plus R equals O. Yeah. So it's like. Uh, <laughs> You're not responding correctly to the situations because, not to say you're stressed, but, you know, you're gone. You're gone 60 hours a week, not mm. to mention drive time, not to mention if there's a meeting and you take the shortcuts. Not to mention you, the people calling you randomly, yeah, all that shit. issues. Yeah. So you take the shortcuts. And then it became to me to be like, Hammer, uh, what's the difference? Before, I thought it was for me or my family, and they wasn't getting nothing out of it. Now I'm working... Not to say they ain't getting nothing out of it, and it's always what you could do better, but they ain't getting nothing out of it because I'm gone 60 hours a week. When I come home, I got an issue. I'm stressed stressed out. I may not respond 
to an issue at home, right? Yeah. And you're still fighting for betterment, but where does it get you? Yeah. yeah. And so that's why, regardless to what my kids, I just teach them strength, teach them that life's not fair, and life's not random, though. If you want the life you say you want, then you work for that life, and I guarantee you, you'll have it. Yeah, I'll tell you uh, a quote I love is actually from T.I., who until recently I really didn't respect that much as a rapper. Now I, I judge myself for not respecting that much as a rapper, but uh, he has a quote that says, uh, "I'm not." it's going to be a misquote, I'm not going to say it exactly, but it says, uh, <clears throat> I see a lot of you out here uh, partying every weekend, but you're not where you want to be. What exactly are you celebrating? You know, so... Like you were saying back in the day, you used to fucking leave at eight in the morning, not come home till three or four in the morning. I'm sure some of that was just living it up. And, you know, what 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 were you celebrating? And that's that's something I really had to come into. Mediocracy. Mediocracy. That's exactly what it is. You're you're celebrating. You still weren't living to your full potential. Celebrating making it by. Mm -hmm. Like when you realize that, like, <clears throat> you think life is all about there's there's a certain por portion in your life when with how we grew up that you think like living that party, that's what life is. Like you got to be able to party and get out there and have a good time and just, and then I'm, at some point it hits like, man, I'm partying, but I ain't doing shit. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing a goddamn thing. Yeah. That's the, and, and don't get me wrong. I don't regret, I don't regret nothing. Mm -hmm. Only reason I don't regret nothing because I'm man enough to look it in the face and say whether I was wrong whether I was wrong, but I feel I was right. Yeah. Whether I was wrong, but my actions were t to lead to a better place. I'm just a man. I'll yeah. look at it and I'll say I'm wrong. I'll say, hey, it is what it is. But it's just growth. It's right. learning. Well, the thing is, I think you can have no regrets as long as you learn. Yeah. And that's and that's where you that's where I choose to live my life at. Yeah. Is we're gonna all make mistakes. Yeah. And we all ain't gonna figure it out. No. Um, we can support, but as long as you're trying to learn and grow, and hammer, it might be a work in progress. It might be twenty, thirty times you go through the same thing. Right. Um, but as long as you're learning something, and at least you can say, "Yeah, I did that yeah. before." Yeah, I may be, I may be seventy before I figure the it all out. The problem is, is when you don't see it or don't realize it or don't tell it to yourself, mm -hmm. and that's something that I will like instill in my kids: is you're gonna be wrong. I was wrong. Um, I made decisions in my life. You gonna make decisions in your life. Let those actions be the decisions that you say you want, and we yeah. can work on it. Um, my actions ain't to say I, anybody got it figured out, but guess what? My actions is to teach these kids this, so they can use that. And even if they don't use it, they have the knowledge to be able to gain, not to say financially, but just life life from it yeah and and that's what i want i just want understanding yeah yeah i'm with that I, I i definitely i think as long as you're constantly learning then you're moving in the right direction and you may never get exactly where you want to be like like i said i may be 70 before i really figure out exactly how to balance all this but what i do know is i finally have found a a space where i know that just partying and drinking isn't going to get me anything to that where I you want. say you want to go yeah, yeah yeah it's 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 just not like i kept saying like oh if i just had the chance don't get me wrong now yeah. i will get i will get caught up in a bad decision <laughs> real quick and party and drink absolutely and that's absolutely. where i'm saying it's like at least you know yeah hey but you, you just, uh, what you are you doing from it yeah you just gotta, and even if you don't learn from it we're allowed those vices you know we're allowed not to say mistakes yeah obviously doing something irrational out of judgment but yeah we're allowed to like like right now like keeping it real with you hammer i go to the bar right now and have two drinks i'm not going to be at the bar all night listening yeah. to music and partying yep um it's not the life i want right but we allowed but to you make get mistakes up in and and learn that this ain't what i want this ain't what i want to do yeah and, but then when you look in that mirror and say that behavior yeah is not going to get me the job, the gig, the 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 attributes that I want. Yeah, and, and some, you can learn. And sometimes you just need that blow off time. You know, sometimes you just need that. Sometimes you just need to be able to be like, you know what? Today, I care about nothing. <laughs> Till it turns to a DUI. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. No. 
hey, you don't know this, but I'm good at that walking shit. <laughs> I'm good at that walking shit. I'll walk miles just I to not get that, that DUI. Hey, I'm going to do another pause, man. Hold on. Ooh, that boy pissing. So we went on vacation. We were in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh-huh. And I haven't found the charger for that camera yet. So I was like, ah, we'll set the camera up. The battery may die. We'll find out. So I just haven't found the charger for it yet, and it did. It died. Okay. So I was going to use the phone, but I was like, man, I really want to use the camera because it's only the second time I ever used it. I just got that thing. I get that feeling. I know that feeling. I wish I wish you to say something, baby. I told you, baby. <laughs> we in there. <laughs> Tell me. I got I got a camera in the car. Oh, I got dude. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, it's not obviously to that quality. Yeah. Um, it's an EOS M. 50 or M, okay. yeah, M50 Canon. Um, but I'm pleased. Yeah, um, well, I got starter camera. I got my I got my regular like uh picture camera oh, that also see it right there. That also records. Yeah, but the uh that so the thing with those cameras, the problem with them is hold on. You got me in here like a fiend uh hammer. I, I quit smoking cigarettes five five and a half weeks ago on the twenty third of February, man. Woo. Hey, no lie, I Woo. I, uh, I, quit, uh, I quit. Just, <laughs> I quit just I quit just a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, the cat's out the bag. My bad, brother. Uh, hey, man, it was gonna be on video camera if I left that shit recorded anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna have some explaining to do. Ooh, baby, you gonna have some explaining to do? <laughs> the. Uh, but yeah, so those those cameras like that, they will only record for forty five minutes and then shut off. Okay. No matter what memory card you have. So yeah, but so we, you got to buy the expensive ass video camera okay. in order for it to record long enough. Longer. You're right. Them How ridiculous are, is that? You're right because mine's the same. You're right. Mm-hmm. It's only I think mine only does twenty nine point some minutes. Yeah. Yep, you're right. You're Why right. is that? Because when I first started this, I kept buying different cameras. I didn't even think to read about them beforehand. Like, oh, no, they just you hit record, and they record for as long as the battery life is good for. Nope. No. They will just shut Every off. Every 30 minutes, shut off. Yeah. yeah. How ridiculous is that, man? I think it's just an energy, or industry standard. When you're editing videos, I just don't think you want to go through three hours worth of video Yeah. to edit. So it's like saying... Boom, boom. And then when you're getting in and processing files, mm-hmm. who wants to send a five hour video would take three days to send. So yeah. I, I think that's might be why they do it. Well, so what's crazy is even with that camera that we have up there, which people aren't gonna see the video now because of the the fuck up here, but so with they with that camera, it still records in, in thirty minute clips. So like when I open up the file of it. Uh, I, I don't think I left you quite half. That's my bad. <laughs> oh, no worries, man. I'm toasted, man. I came here and got a free. I came here for for advice and got a, got a free ride. Like <laughs> shit, I'm cool, man. You hook me up more than you know. <laughs> but so they. Uh, but so that thing when I pulled out the files, it actually still just records in like 30 minute segments. But when you clip them together, there's no interruption. Gotcha. You. you know what I mean? So, so it smooth. still does that, but it keeps recording gotcha. and it's smooth. So I was surprised because when I first opened up the file, when I first opened up the file, I was like, oh shit, it's 30 minute segments. Like it's going to end up missing something, but no, it's smooth right through. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm excited for it, man. It's the same one Joe Rogan uses on his podcast. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to definitely uh, soup up. Uh, like you said, you little... A little bit of money down. Oh yeah. Um, but in the scheme of things, thinking about this and that, you make that back. But like, I want to invest in stuff like that as well. Yeah. Well, and you know, honestly, what I did is everything. So when I got into podcasts, it was pretty much a Joe Rogan podcast that I started with. Now I'm into mm-hmm. a few different ones, but so he was my inspiration for what I decided to do with this. And then uh, when I started. I bought the initial equipment, just like find me dis- decent equipment. And mm-hmm. now I have a thing saved and it gives you all the equipment that Joe Rogan uses. Mm-hmm. And so that's every time I buy new equipment now, I'm like, I'm going to spend the extra money. Oh, and I'm what gonna he, get what he's using because he's got the, you invested in them. You and, watch them, you look at them, you listen, you like it. Yeah. And he's got the biggest, most famous podcast in the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he just got paid a hundred million dollars to go just to Spotify. So now all of his shit is only on Spotify. And actually, $100 million is a low ball because all, all they actually say is it's at least $100 million. Mm-hmm. Like, he did that. And man. that's 
this hammer yeah. is to tie it all together mm-hmm. is successful, right? Joe Rogan, successful in anybody's account category, whether it's Fear Factor, MMA, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, true success came when he stopped working for somebody else in another company and yeah. did it himself. Yeah. And that's the message that I want kids to know is that when you stop telling letting somebody tell you how you should do something or you could do something and you follow it and just do it consistently because you want and then that'd be your hundred million dollar check uh yeah well and what's crazy is that's exactly what he says too he like he'll tell people like don't try to go i mean he does it in the media world so he uses that as the example so he says like don't try to go work for a news station don't go try to do this do it yourself He's like, do it yourself. You can do it unedited. You have complete control over it. You can make it exactly what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to fucking succumb to what anybody is telling you it should be. Yeah. And But we live in a world where they'll call you crazy for believing it. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'm not not the biggest in the world Kanye West fan. I understand there's, like, size to him. Um, But if you listen to his interviews and he says the same thing, uh, when you look at per se Louis Vuitton yeah you know there's a group of two or three billionaires that run Louis Vuitton um but what they'll do is is they'll see somebody like you that has all the skill not to say to take them out the box but to to make them work harder so instead of letting you go make your own brand and this is where people don't see then Louis Vuitton will come to you and offer you a salary to work for them right yeah now you're making 200000 a year and you feel like you've made it. But in all actuality, all they kept you from doing was starting your own brand to right. make your billion dollars. What they, and I, people don't understand that aspect of it. I will say what they bring to it is they bring the infrastructure already in place. Yeah. So you don't have to figure out how to do certain avenues like distribution, marketing, and all those yeah. things. But they're probably still undervaluing what you bring to the table. Yeah. And it, really you could learn all those things. It might take you longer than you want. This is gives you this gives you immediately what you want. Yeah. This may take you a little longer doing it yourself, but I think in the grand scheme of things you end and up And that's happier. where we talk about effort. Yeah. Because you could tell me right now, "Hey Blake, I could sign you to a contract for uh, you know, I'll pay you 20 grand a year." You just give me everything you got, right? Yeah. But if Blake don't believe in himself or he sells himself short, he's like, yeah, but that's what this world forces you to make is these decisions based off of your value. And I want to teach my kids that your value is whatever you say your value is. Yeah. And sadly, if you believe that your value is that, how many people you met that believe their value is high and that you know they're not? But right. they believe that stuff so much that they act like that to where it increases your value of them even though you know they ain't mm-hmm. shit. It increases their value to other people. Yeah. And yeah. and, and it's sadly, and I, I mean, I know people aren't going to agree with this, but I tell my kids, I don't care what type of piece of shit you're going to be. You just can't let people know you a piece of shit. Yeah. By, by being disrespectful or ignorant or, you know, you, you don't view yourself. Like, if you know you're a piece of shit the last thing people should know is that you're a piece of shit. Yeah. It's actually something that uh, uh, this partnership and uh, the podcast and everything I've been doing with Amanda that has really taught me because that's something she says. She says, what is your time worth to you? Mm Mm-hmm. She's like, you. if you're going to value yourself at $8, and that's what you're going to get. If you're going to, I'm making up numbers. She said, but if you're going to value yourself at $25, then that's what you're going to get. Yeah. Because you're providing something that nobody else can provide because mm-hmm. you are unique. Yep. And, and, and that's, that's why I have a problem with the word I can't. More or less, like, if you tell me, like, hey, Blake, I need you to do blah, 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 blah. If the first word out my mouth is I can't, if I ask somebody, like somebody that worked for me, hey, uh, such and such, I'm going to need you to do this, this, and that, and the third. If the first word out your mouth is I can't, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. That dampens your my view of you right yeah. then and there. Um, because you haven't even put the thought or the effort. Again, take you back. We got $1,000 computers in our hands every day. So you can figure so it you out. you can look it up and figure it out before you say, I can't. Yeah. Like anybody that says, I can't, before they pick up their smart device and look it up in Google on how to do it. Yeah. 
I'm sorry is a piece of shit to me. Yeah. Because really, what your what your question is, should be is like, okay, so what's that worth to you? Yeah. Because, yeah, I'll figure out. You don't have to say it this way, but in your mind, you should be like, okay, I'll figure out how to do that. Yeah. But it's going to cost you. Exactly. <laughs> but, but these are the people that put no effort into themselves or changing anything around them. Yeah. But these are the people that have the highest standard of what another person should live like. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, man, I'll tell you, like, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about my personal experience. Like, I hear a lot of people say, uh, like, say they've gotten in trouble in life and they think, like, okay, I can't do nothing now. Like, I, I'm screwed. I got this I got this charge on me or I got this. Like, nobody's ever going to give me a chance. Well, I went through that. You know, I, I, I ended up with a, a felony through my life experiences and I was still able to come out of that almost off the rip with a 50 K year job off the rip. I didn't, you know, it was, it was tough. Like I had to go through a little bit of bullshit to start with, but I eventually ended up within a year or two out of nowhere, just from like, I'm going to learn how to do this and this job, this and this job, this and this job to where my value increased. So you can't tell me that something is going to hold you back. You just got to figure it out. <clears throat> and yep. I mean, similar substance i believe the same thing mm -hmm. i believe that uh you know we come in a world where social media damaged us not even social media uh mainstream media yeah it told us what to think what to believe yeah. social media is a, is a sub form of that um <clears throat> but yeah if well honestly people, regular media is almost just as bad as social media people now tell you oh such and such can't get this or such and such can't get this job I hate to say it, it's your fault for believing it, not yours, but I mean, it's, it's a person's fault for believing it before yeah. they try. Yeah. And if you say you want it, if your actions line up to you wanting that, you're going to get it. Like, I'll be honest with you. Like I told you, I started out $8 an hour. Yeah. And you think I wanted $8 an hour? No. And so I spent every living, breathing moment of my life trying to get over 100000 a year. Yeah. And or trying to get to if people don't know what that is, it's like forty five an hour. Yeah. You spend your freaking life chasing that. Mm hmm. And guess what? It'll happen. Mm hmm. And guess what? It happened. And that's <clears throat> where sometimes like that passion is like I can't explain it because it's like ain't nobody in God's green earth going to tell me what I can can and can't do. Yeah. If I give up, I can't do it. Yeah. But I know I only didn't do it because I gave up. Right. And well, and really, that's the only blockade is you. <laughs> that's it. Ob there, there is Obstacles welcome. Yeah. There is no other blockade to you reaching your goals but you. Yeah. If you set your mind towards something you and you want to keep pushing, then you're going to get there. Yeah. You just, you got to get there. Now, in situations like this with a podcast and stuff, you know, people got to feel what you're saying, stuff like that. But say, say I'm doing this. Now, this is kind of what it's turned into. I love doing this. This uh -huh. is a passion of mine. I enjoy this. I can tell you got quite the voice for it. Too. <laughs> yeah, I wish do. my voice was as, as, as <laughs> vernacular as yours. <laughs> but some, but, but this, this podcast itself may not ever turn into what makes me the money. I hope it does. And, you know, I, I do believe if I keep pushing, it, it could. But... Now I've discovered that I have this love for the, the media aspect of it. Like, I actually enjoy editing it. I re enjoy helping people record. I enjoy helping people get their voice out there. Mm -hmm. But so now, uh, with some other people's help, I've, I've kind of altered my view of it. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing this because I love this. But I love everything that surrounds it. So now maybe I start charging people to help get their voice out there. Yeah. And it's it's... At that point, too, what I love about it is it's not even about me. It's not even just about me making the money from it. I mean, that's just I got to eat. I got to yeah. have food on the table. But I enjoy helping people get their voice out there. Yeah. So now, like, oh, shit, I can turn this into a different kind of business. I can keep doing my thing, but I can also help other people record and do their thing and, you know, make enough money to put food on my table. So it's, it's kind of where I'm at. It, sometimes it's a... Sometimes it's a like a catch twenty two for me, I guess, because I want to just help people do that. 
But if I just help people do that and don't bring anything in in return, then I'm suffering. Yeah. And I can't, I can't suffer and continue to help. So I have to, I have to be able to bring something in in order to continue to be able to help. And I think that <clears throat> that's perfectly said, and that comes with what we talked about, like being selfless or being a good leader. Um, seeing what's in people when they don't see it in themselves. Yeah. Um, sadly, if it was a perfect world, but I'm going to be honest with you, Hammer. If I called you over to my house to dig six-foot holes and I didn't pay you, I guarantee you those those uh, those holes won't be six-foot. I guarantee you. <laughs> if we can call 100 oh. contractors and ask them to dig six-feet holes outside your house, yeah. if we don't pay them, 98% of the holes will not be six feet. They won't be six feet, and you, they may not all be dug. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh, just, I'm missing five holes. Well, you didn't pay me. It's, <laughs> sadly, it's, it's, it's what society has, has, has taught us. Like, not taught us, but society has taught us that if if you pay somebody and, you, and, you, and you're serious, then that's how you get out the seriousness. Like, I could I could burn up all your time in the world, right? And then say, hey, I want to do this, I want to do that. And you might be real enough to help me. Yeah. But if you don't charge me, how am I ever going to take it serious? Yeah. And that's what that's what business is is made up upon. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's the value of the services that you offer. But more importantly, is how you make a motherfucker feel yeah. about giving them them services. And that's yeah. why I have no qualms with uh, dealing with you on that professional level because um i know what i'm going to get in return by what you stand on as yeah. your product and that's where people have to realize is that the people that don't want to pay aren't invested in putting the time and the effort that it does call because i mean i'm just getting into this hammer <laughs> and i had like 12 minute videos that took me almost two hours to try to edit a two a one hour or a one minute and 15 second video so i can only imagine what you're doing like, yeah. like the I work see, you're doing is like literally four or five hours in your sleep right it's it's it, until i until i uh decided to try to turn it into a business i would tell people like you don't understand like my hobby is a job like mm-hmm. i people are like oh you take the weekends off like man i don't take the weekends off i record two to three podcasts on a weekend and then I have to edit them. So I got hours in yeah. on my days off yeah. for a hobby. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> you know, man, me and Hillary, we, uh, she had said something because I stayed up to like three, four in the morning one night or just like two nights ago and, I, and then I go into bed and lay down and she's like, oh, why are you on the computer? And I was like, I was just doing like some stuff and then, and then she said, yeah, but it's late. I said, yeah. It's like, and I said, hell, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. If you think that I want to be on this computer till 4 or 5 in the morning learning how to work uh, Adobe Premiere Pro Plus, like, <laughs> you're crazy because it's like crazy. racking my brain. I'm, my eyes is numb. <laughs> I'm like, God, law, but, but you know, <sighs> that that's like what people don't see behind the scenes, how, how much it takes to really be good. Yeah. Or not even be good. They enough just to care about the social media wave. They just see me doing like this part. Uh huh. Like this part I love. And it looks this good, is, right? This is fun. I'm having a good time doing this. I love talking to you. I love talking to my friends. Uh huh. But when this is over, it's now, work time. I, I, now I got work to do, man. <laughs> and then sadly, because we just sat here and ran our charts for almost two hours, <laughs> yeah. sadly, it's about two days <laughs> worth of work. Yeah. That and, you ain't getting paid for yeah. necessarily. And, and right now it's Easter Sunday. And now if I get this to people by Wednesday, people will be like, what took so long? I'm like, yeah. motherfucker, you don't know. You don't got a clue. <laughs> like, and, and, I, and, and I didn't either, <laughs> Hammer. Like yeah. until coming into this, when I used to watch your videos and even watching them two or three days before I knew we were going to link up um, to hear the sound quality, to see the visuals, mm-hmm. to see like, uh, your, you know, your setup. And not only that. Um, it's kind of crazy because the last video I watched, like this was out, and I see you got it fixed. I'm like, like that gives me a passion to want to yeah. come build with you because I see that your passion is taking care of the little loose ends to make sure that yeah. that your perception or your brand is of quality. And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of well, people will not take yeah. the effort into their brand. Well, and it's also why I went ahead and bought these mics too. Cause the mics I had, I learned how to make them sound real well, uh-huh. real good. Like I, 
I I have to mess with them beforehand. You steal one, by the way. I got you. I, I have to. I have to. I have to. I, I have to. With those old mics, I had to mess with the mess with the settings beforehand, and then I had to mess with them after. Now with these ones, I don't got to mess with them. Cool. And plus, if I'm going to charge people to come and record and do stuff like that, I damn well better have the top of the line stuff. Yeah. Like there's for there are no better mics in the podcast world and even just the recording world than the mics that I have now. Uh-huh. Uh, and I felt like if I was going to charge people to do that, I had to have that. Yeah. Because even with a little bit of tiny bit of research, if you say, what's the best mics for podcasts, these are what are going to come up. And it's it's easy to find. So if the person walks in the day one of recording after I've signed them to a contract, you know, to do this for them, and they come in and they see not these mics, it's like, well, fuck, what am I paying what for? What am I paying for? Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? We got to have these mics. We got to spend the money. And truthfully, when I first started the podcast, because these are the ones that Joe Rogan uses, I said, one day I'm going to have those mics. So this gave me the perfect reason to buy yeah. them, too. I was like, oh, shit. Now, now I got to buy them. <laughs> Not only that, but you, 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 you grow up on watching something, right? And, yeah. And, 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 and in life, we watch our parents. And, and that's what I'm saying is... The catch twenty two is we grow up watching our parents work and yeah. figure it out, and we think that we have to live that. Yeah. Um, but when you're talking quality, you're like, we stop thinking about doing what somebody else is doing, and we start thinking about getting the results right. that somebody else got. Right. If you watch it and it captivates you, and you know he's using, why not? Why right. not give it a shot if you want to put that passion into it? And that's what i would like to motivate and yeah. not only my kids but hopefully people motivate that in their kids is, is stop telling them what they can't do and start telling them if you see that and you like it find out how they got that and you do it better <clears throat> yeah well i'll tell you what in some ways even when i started with the cheaper mics but now especially with this if somebody comes and starts recording with me i'm already putting you a step ahead of what joe rogan started with mm-hmm. because when he first started doing his like if you go back to like his first i don't know couple hundred episodes he was literally basically using fucking webcams and whatever that's what he started with he started just with nothing big shots joe rogan uh, oh, i forgot we ain't get no camera but big shots joe rogan i'm coming for that title baby i'm gonna inspire david hammer like you did one day yeah. well and I, I i wish i could have a conversation with him one day that's what i recently got asked why not a, i recently got asked a question uh who would you uh if you could have dinner with anybody who would it be and I had two because they didn't say dead or alive. Uh, the first one was my dad because he passed away. Okay, so yeah. I, w- I would love to have a- another conversation with him. But then after that was Joe Rogan because he inspired me to do so much. And I wasn't even because he's known as a comedian. Uh-huh. I wasn't even a fan of his uh, comedy back in the day. I-, I actually didn't like it. But his podcast I fucking fell in love with. Changed, changed the way I perceived a lot of things. Uh, no, I like his comedy. His comedy is taking leaps and bounds. But he was the second person on that. So mm-hmm. to have a conversation with Joe Rogan one day, just a little conversation would be fucking phenomenal. That'd be unreal. I actually, I, I think about moving to Austin sometimes because that's where he lives now. He's going to open a comedy club. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a bartender and I run restaurants, so I might be able to help Squeak him out in there. there. <laughs> Get <laughs> in there. <laughs> I might be able to with help him out. With these ghost shops that's opened up, I wouldn't say it wasn't, but, but honestly, I would just push you. Um, at this point... You've done everything more or less in your life that you wanted to do. Um, I know there's more out there, but as far as these dreams, um, I, that's why I levitate towards you. Um, as long as I've known you, uh, like you said, from the ping pong. Actually, I'm lying to you. From from the first little rinky-dink apartment that you had up there in behind Burger King. Yeah, yeah. Like that much. I forgot you was yeah, over there. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been around a while now. Yeah. Um, Back when you used to have the little, uh, the little MMA, the pre-MMA fights before the big house. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, yeah. the pre, like your little MMA, like, and, and that's one of the things that, uh, mm. that draw me to your message um, even from seeing you in passing, like it's always the same message, and it's been that way since what I don't know. The House of Burger King was what 2010, 2011, Man, years maybe? and years ago, something yeah, like that, yeah. 2009, even. Yeah, because after that, we bought that house over on Beauty Vista. Yeah, like, close we was, to that. We was always just trying to step up, and it was always the same. 
and it was uh, it was always the same message. It was always even back then, <clears throat> 10, 15 years ago, it was MMA on Saturday nights. Come up, Fox. I got this. We can play PlayStation. And when that vibe doesn't change or the message doesn't change, it becomes easier to follow. Yeah. And that's where I feel like in those leaps and bounds, like um, Joe Who. Yeah. <laughs> um, and not the no shots at Joe Rogan. Um, you're a god. I understand that. Yeah. And, but that's where I would push you to say when. Yeah. I meet Joe Rogan. Not if, but when, because when. Yeah. as consistent as you're going to stay, I believe that that's going to, what it's going to uh, 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 visualize to. Yeah. like a, a, I listen a, to your voice. I listen to three, four of your, your videos. Um, You got a very strong voice. And I, that's what draws me in. Yeah. Is that when I hear your voice, it's not different. It's yeah. always coarse and strong and. Yeah. And I ain't gonna lie, it does. It reminds me, it shows that Joe Rogan's your idol, so I'm sure he would be very well uh, uh, I appreciate respectful. That. Hopefully, hopefully one day this all blows up and uh, and we'll make cross that path. Man, cross paths that would be the shit. But man, I think we've had a, I think we've had an awesome episode. Yeah, I think. Now, hey, he done filled me up. He didn't touch me. Now I got to pee, man. Yeah. <laughs> now I need a break, man. He done got me. Like I didn't even expect to be here this long, but <laughs> it, it turned genuine. And I tell you, I tell you what, viewers, man, please request, man. Hopefully, he has me back one time and we get to chop it up again when life turns into a little little view. But yeah, uh, Dave, man. Big ups, and I really appreciate you having me, bro. Oh, uh, absolutely, man. I appreciate you coming on, and we'll definitely do this again because I, I also feel like you you had a little nervousness, and once that slid, man, we 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 knocked it out. Rolled, man. We I was rolled. nervous as shit, man. Was, yeah. I don't even know what it was, man. <laughs> and he brought me here, and I see all this uh equipment. You know, when you think that somebody doesn't put their life into it, and, and, and you and you and you just see the videos. Yeah, the videos do not do no justice to what somebody has dedicated to their life. <laughs> to, to bringing these presentations so yeah. it's an honor bro well i appreciate that man i can't wait to do it again honestly man i think we got a lot more to talk about and, definitely uh, and i i think we're gonna have a good time and i can't wait to see uh what you do i can't wait to help you with it and uh we'll get it going brother yes sir i appreciate it man you have a great day thank you all for joining in to us with uh easter sunday and yeah. thank you for having me dave on this easter sunday i know we made these plans and it was like undisclosed but we forgot it was easter sunday we were don't like, say that don't say that i might go down as a bad dad if you say that but we did forget but yeah. nevertheless thanks for having me on this easter sunday thanks for making time for me man i appreciate it bro absolutely brother can't wait to do it again yes sir gathering fools we're out boom <laughs>